Hey guys, welcome back to Shelf Life Extension. I'm Alexis and I finally have a freaking day off. This is super exciting because now I can actually film and it's literally been weeks. <laughs> I feel like I haven't had a day off where I could just do Jack in a while. Uh, I was gonna work today, but then um, decided that I wouldn't because uh, I didn't have to. So I did not. So instead I decided I was gonna film a crap ton of videos, that way I could have them all pre-scheduled and ready to go, that way I don't have to worry about days off and scheduling and finding the time and editing and all that stuff, considering our Wi-Fi right now is still shut down for a little bit longer for our next couple days. So if it doesn't get turned on uh, by the time that I'm done editing all these videos and stuff, then I will probably uh, take it with me to my parents' house and upload or whatever I can. It's just my parents' house is kind of far away, so unless I have money for gas, it kind of doesn't work. Anyways, so is life, and today I'm going to film for you. So today I am going to be doing just my June wrap-up, what I read in June. And I'm going to be completely honest, I read a lot, which is kind Kind of surprising because I felt like I didn't read at all. It feels like I didn't read anything, but surprisingly I kind of did. Although it wasn't a lot of novels, it was a crap ton of manga. But you know, hey, at least it's still reading and it's still doing something and it's actually really exciting because I actually want to get more into manga and I really want to bring manga more onto this channel and I want to introduce a lot of you to manga if you haven't been into manga or ever read manga or watched anime or anything like that. So I definitely want to try and do that more. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and and just kind of get started, just re review what I read and talk about it. So surprisingly, I did read four novels and the first two I'm gonna talk about are Anita Blake novels because, you know, Anita Blake is my bitch. So, actually it's really funny, I finished The Lunatic Cafe, which is number four a couple days ago and I was like, oh, I want number five, like right now, but you guys, I forced myself not to. I didn't do it. I'm thinking about it, but I won't. I want to, but I won't. So the first one I finished was Circus of the Damned, which is number three in the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. It follows Anita Blake as she is trying to find a murderer of vampires and trying to figure out, you know, kind of what's happening, what's going on, because she is, you know, corresponding with the master vampire of the city and he doesn't know anything. And so obviously things are happening and so she needs to kind of figure it out. So it follows kind of that. And then in Lunatic Cafe, the fourth book follows Circus of the Damned and it just follows Anita Blake in the aftermath of that and how she is now becoming more intertwined in the supernatural society. Besides being connected to the master vampire of the city, she is now kind of in cahoots with a alpha werewolf who is in the process of challenging for pack leader. Stuff is going down. It's getting super crazy. That is not spoilery for you guys in case you guys or freaking out or you want to read these. It's not spoilery. It doesn't give you anything as far as what's legitimately happening, but that is just kind of what is happening in this time. So yeah, I love Anita Blake. I love the series. I love the dialogue. I love her sass and her innocence in a way. It's really interesting because I mentioned this before that she's 23, 24 in the series and that freaks me out because it's like I'm 22 right now and I remember when I first read Anita Blake I was like 13 and you know when you're 13 reading about a 24 year old you're like oh my gosh she's so mature and she's so old and she's like everything I could aspire to be and then you get there and you're just like that's not old and that's not really mature and the fact that she does the things that she does at that age freaks me out because it's like how do you handle yourself like that like how do you even get into that like blows my mind, but I can relate to her a lot more, which is really exciting. So yes, these, and I'm excited to grab that fifth one whenever I can, next paycheck probably, because I'm gonna get paid a lot next paycheck. The next two books that I finished were Simone St. James novels, First Thing Silence for the Dead, which I did mention in my last video, or video before that, whatever. I talked about this. Silence for the Dead follows a girl named Kitty Weeks. She finds herself working at a mental institution where crazy stuff starts to happen and ghosts and voices and things and craziness and romance and it's fun. I really enjoyed this. I really, really love her covers. Ooh, the color schemes. <sighs> And then the, there is an inquiry into love and death. Oh, I really enjoyed this one. I mentioned it as well in my last video, I think. It's about this girl named Jillian Lay who gets pulled out of college to pretty much go to this coastal village town called Rothwell to kind of pick up her uncle's things because her uncle tragically passed away. But 
she and a few other people in the town as well as a Scotland Yard investigator thinks that it might not have been an accident and it would in fact have been murder or something of the sort. And it's just kind of about her figuring out what her uncle's life was like because her uncle was a ghost hunter. What he was doing in that town, why was he there, what was he searching for, did he find something and did what he find come after him kind of thing. As I mentioned, it gave me 13 ghosts and madhouse feels. I really enjoy Simone St. James right now. If you guys are really interested in a interesting horror, not super scary, but kind of creepy, but very fun kind of book, then I definitely suggest you check her out. Otherwise, pretty much all those books I gave four out of five. I don't think I gave any five out of five. They weren't like, oh my gosh, like five out of five. But they were like, that was really exciting and really good. I recommend, so four out of five. You know, they're, they're good, they're fun. Check them out if you would like. Otherwise, the rest of the month, Tons and tons of So the first three I'm gonna mention, ooh, are just the ones on top as I scoot closer to the camera for you. And that is Spell of Desire by Tomu Omi. I really enjoy this one. Read the first one, and then Shelby went and got the second and third ones. It's very interesting. It's really fun and it's really mature which is kind of interesting to see because I've never actually seen a manga go this far as far as that. But yeah, it's about this girl named Kariko who is the vessel of her mother's power and her mother just so happens to be the black witch queen and her mom is who the hell knows where. Nobody really knows except for those in her circle and her uh, knight, which is this guy, uh, comes to kind of protect Kariko and make sure that she's not mishandling the power and all that good stuff because he answers to her mother. But then it kind of gets complicated as she starts to have feelings for him him, he starts to have feelings for her and things get kind of crazy. The witch coven wants her because they think that she has her own powers which might match her mother's. Whoa, just craziness. It's super fun. I really enjoy it. So these are awesome. Next was Demon Love Spell. One through four. Shelby got the first one, then she went and bought the second, third, and fourth ones. Oh, isn't it so cute? I love this series, it's so much fun. As I mentioned before in that past video, if you've ever read Medupuri or if you've read Kamisama Kiss, but it's about this girl named Miko who is a shrine maiden and she can't see demons, whereas the rest of her family can. And uh, one day she actually does seal the powers of the most powerful powerful demon. His name is Kagura and he is an incubus. So yeah, so he pretty much has to stay within her vicinity to try and, you know, get his powers back to normal. But then of course they start kind of having feelings for each other and it's super cute, it's super hilarious, and it's so much fun. If you are interested in something like this, you should definitely check it out. If you enjoyed those uh, mangas or animes, which I mentioned before, then definitely, definitely check this out. It's so much fun and I'm so excited for when Shelby goes and gets the rest. Next, as I mentioned, I read the first in So Cute It Hurts. I'm so excited for the rest of the series when it does come out, which sucks because it ain't gonna come out anytime soon. Actually it is. The next one comes out I think in August and then the one after that comes out in October. I've already pre-ordered them. I'm so ready. I think this is going to be so much fun. It's so cute and I wish I read Japanese so that I could just get the Japanese manga but uh, I don't. One of these days maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, the struggle it is real. Otherwise yes it's about this pair of fraternal twins. One's a boy one's a girl and how the boy is like hey trade places with me because I'm failing my class classes and I need you to, you know, pass them for me and stuff and I'll go to school as you and I'll be surrounded by all these girls and so he kind of goes ahead and does it without her permission. So she's left to go to the school dressed up as her brother and try and, you know, figure her way around and it's about both of them finding love in these schools when they're dressed up as the opposite sex and kind of finding their way through that. It's super cute. I'm super excited and I'm ready. I'm so ready. And then next as I mentioned was Kimini Todoke, which is one of my favorite animes of like all time. It's so cute. It's adorable. It's just 
everything. I watched the anime series multiple, multiple times, and I just wanted to actually get the manga and have my own collection. There are a lot, a lot of volumes to the series, so uh, if only they had the three in ones, like skip beat, that'd be great. But otherwise, Kimi ni Todoke, it's about this girl named Sawako, who everybody thinks is haunted or cursed or that she can see ghosts. They kind of think of her as um, whatever her name is from the ring, you know. The ring, the movie. Watch this video and you have seven days and you're gonna die. She's gonna crawl out of your TV and stop and kill you. Her, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So they think she's like that, but she's really not. She just doesn't know how to talk to people and how to convey her feelings and emotions and get what she's thinking out. And it's kind of about her and how she kind of falls in love with this guy and how through that relationship, mutual friendship and mutual love that they have for each other, how she can then grow and become a better person and make more friends with the people in her classroom which is what she's always wanted forever and it's just adorable and if you haven't watched the anime please watch it if you haven't read the manga read the manga it's fun I love it and then last but not least holy crap this video is getting super long is the first nine <laughs> nine volumes to a devil and her love song as you can tell i really enjoy this series i absolutely enjoy it i love the artwork i love the story i love all the characters and i think it is super interesting and super exciting as i mentioned if you've ever watched or read the wallflower it's a lot like that in that it's about this girl who's really misunderstood, who doesn't know how to connect to people, who doesn't know how to be anything else but herself, and she gets a lot of backlash for it, but she still manages to find love and create friendships and change the people around her for the better. Uh, besides that, it's about this girl named Maria who gets kicked out of her Catholic school for being violent to a teacher and got kicked out, in which case she gets sent to a public school and then it just goes through all the mishaps that she has there and why she got kicked out, what was her life like at that school and why is she the way she is and all this stuff. And it's getting so intense now that we're getting into the uh, later novels. You're getting so much more about her and her background and her childhood and why she is the way that she is. And it's really fun and I'm super excited to kind of see what happens. So yes, this is a fun one guys. I like this. Otherwise, that is about it. That is all I read for the month of June. Four books, however many manga novels. And yeah, I feel pretty accomplished considering I've been so busy. <laughs> And it was finals this week as well as last week, so I finished my paper, which was like, turned out to be like 11 pages long, so I got that done, hooray. And just tons of stuff. Did I mention, guys, I don't think I mentioned, I mentioned that, okay, yeah, I totally finished Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Did I not mention that? Oh. Well, I did, I read that, I finished that as well. So technically five books, hey, that's super exciting. I've already sent it back to my sister. And now I'm gonna tell you what I'm reading at the moment, what I have started at least. So the first is gonna be Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Woo, woo, woo. And here's where I'm gonna mention Chamber of Secrets, which I loved way more than the first book, you know, with the Philosopher's Stone. Just saying, I really enjoyed it so much more. And it was like, I was halfway through Chamber of Secrets and then I got really sick, and then I binge watched all of the Harry Potter movies had a complete cry fest. Snot fest, it was not pretty, it was sad, <sighs> my heart. And then I got super into reading that last half, bulldozed through it, and then I was like, I need the rest. So I grabbed Prisoner of Azkaban for my sister, as well as Goblet of Fire. Uh, I have started this. I'm about 16 pages in, and I plan to continue, you know, reading it, so there's that. I also started The House at Riverton by Kate Morton. This is one of those books that I saw while working, and I really love the cover. Just caught my eye, and it looks so pretty. <laughs> and uh, the story sounded really interesting. It's about this woman named Grace Bradley, who is now, like, 83, and she's getting contacted by a movie producer and director to get her side of a story about what happened to this very, very popular socialite family back in the day because this family was so popular that one night when they had this big house party one of the siblings in the family ended up murdered but nobody knew what happened or nobody was saying anything and she was there at that party she's like okay I'm gonna tell you my side of the story so it's gonna be super cool super interesting oh I just lost my bookmark but yes I'm excited for it you just know that Grace has so much more to do with it than you think or what others know already so I'm excited. I'm excited. <gasps> Maybe she did it. I don't know. 
otherwise that's about it thank you guys for watching I'm super happy that I was able to get this video filmed and you know prepared for you guys and out for you please rate comment and subscribe if you haven't you know I'll see you guys down in the comments and I'll check you guys out later okay bye